Bank, this is the Bank of England. Um, they initiated a multi-year research program into the implication of central bank uh, issuing a digital currency. Um, BOE has published a number of really excellent um, research papers. There are no, no tangible plans so far um, published or, or uh, announced by BOE to introduce a digital currency, but Mark Carney, the um, governor, uh, announced in April that the bank will make our next generation RTGS, um, that's the, the, whole pay, uh, the, the, the wholesale um, payment system, uh, that the next generation RTGS system of the Bank of England will be compatible with DLT, and in my understanding this requires central bank money on the blockchain. The Bank of England is a paid customer of Ripple's. There's another central bank we haven't announced that we're working with very active. Central bank digital currency, or short um, CBDC. CBDC is a new breed of central bank currency that is currently um, being discussed and explored by a number of central banks. It has been called, quote, as revolutionary as a paper note 300 years ago. And this is not some blockchain guru's uh, marketing hyperbole. This is a quote from Cecilia Kingsley, uh, normally clear-headed deputy governor of the Swedish um, Riksbank. And uh, I, I absolutely also believe, uh, as Christian just uh, mentioned, uh, that the introduction of this new kind of central bank money uh, has a potentially huge um, disruptive um, potential and that it warrants attention and discussion beyond um, close uh, central bank circles. <clears throat> to, be, to be clear about that, um, central bank digital currency is not something that is in existence yet. Um, I understand that Ecuador, Tunisia and uh, possibly Senegal have um, issued um, something along these lines. I'm, I don't have ne the necessary information to really say whether this is the true thing or whether this is some kind of uh, e-money, commercial bank uh, money um, on, uh, in, in, in the form um, of a digital representation. But it is clear that, uh, that quite a number of, uh, of major central banks are engaged and actively exploring the introduction of central bank digital currency. Um, the People's Bank of China announced this summer that it will test a prototype of digital currency uh, with mock transactions with some Chinese commercial banks. The Monetary Authority of Singapore, the MAS, completed a distributed ledger trial focused on interbank payments this spring. Um, it followed up with uh, two um, spin-off projects. The first project focuses on fixed income securities trading and settlement on the blockchain. And the second one uh, will test new uh, methods to conduct cross-border payments using um, central bank digital currency. Um, the Bank of, Ch uh, of Canada, the Bank of Canada concluded a test run known as Project Jasper um, this spring. Uh, Project Jasper uh, simulated a wholesale payment system using a DLT-based settlement asset called um, CatCoin. And one of the objectives of uh, Project Jasper was to test whether um, DLT-based um, uh, wholesale payment system could meet the international standards. Um, and Bank of Canada concluded that the test system could meet most, but not all, international standards with important gaps it identified uh, in relation to finality. Now, the Swedish Riksbank is still um, exploring um, the issue of a digital cash substitute. This is a, is a different use case. Uh, digital cash substitute, the eCorona. Um, and I just learned this morning that they will publish a final report on, uh, on the way forward um, next week. Uh, Hong Kong's Monetary Authority started also um, 
uh, research and the proof of concept work to explore the potential of DLT. One of the most active central banks is the Bank of England. Um, they initiated a multi-year research program into the implication of central bank uh, issuing a digital currency. Um, BOE has published a number of really excellent um, research papers. There are no, no tangible plans so far um, published or, or uh, announced by BOE to introduce a digital currency, but Mark Carney, the um, governor, uh, announced in April that the bank will make our next generation RTGS, um, that's the, the, whole pay, uh, the, the, the wholesale um, payment system, uh, that the next generation RTGS system of the Bank of England will be compatible with DLT, and in my understanding this requires central bank money on the blockchain. And finally, the ECB published results of a test run done jointly with uh, the Bank of Japan um, last week. This test run is known as Project Stella, and the aim of Project Stella was to test blockchain technology again for the um, use in wholesale payment systems. And the conclusion, the mi main findings of Project Stella is that DLP-based solutions can meet performance need of an RTGS system. And, and that was, was rather surprising to me that it has the potential to strengthen resi resilience and reliability. So that um, the blockchain really has the potential to improve um, our main financial infrastructure. What I'm going to do over the next uh, 20 or 25 minutes is I will first discuss in a little bit more detail what central bank digital currency is. Um, the terminology is a little bit fuzzy, but I will try to um, pin that down. I will then discuss the possible use cases that are currently considered. I think this is um, helpful to um, analyze the, the potential impact. I will briefly um, touch upon the question why, for heaven's sake, central bank should engage in this kind of business after they have been battling now for 10 years, um, multiple crises, um, and then come up with a relatively long list of open issues and future research and then um, make some conclusions. And as Christian said, um, I'm happy to take questions um, while I'm speak, if I'm not sufficiently clear. Now, what is CBCD? Um, the IMF, in a very recent working paper, um, defined it as a widely available DLT-based representation of fiat money. DLT is distributed ledger technology, a little bit more sophisticated for, for blockchain. But it uh, includes um, four points, four key um, elements. It is first a representation of fiat money, that is central bank money. So it's, it uh, would exist along banknotes and coins and central bank reserves, the two current form of central bank money. It is denominated in a sovereign currency, it's in its own um, denomination like virtual currencies. It would be convertible into cash or central bank reserves and most likely would be legal tender, although um, this isn't really um, extremely relevant. The second element of this definition is it is issued as a coin or a token on a distributed ledger, and it is transferred on, on the blockchain that is, and the transfer is a peer-to-peer -peer operation without, without an intermediary. And that's the difference to, to central bank reserves, which are account-based. Um, CBDC is, is value-based. The third element, and uh, that's, that's true for all models on the consideration, they have in common that access to central bank money is expanded. Currently, um, access to banknotes is universal. Everybody can, of course, hold banknotes, but access to central bank reserves is um, restricted, closely restricted uh, to banks and payment service operators. And all models on the consideration would expand that access. I think that's a common denominator. This does not mean that it is necessarily universal access. That depends on the model.
Now, how would uh, CBDC fit into the current landscape of monetary assets? Um, you have here physical money, that's, that's, that's cash on the one hand, and then private tokens and notes, irrelevant, but, uh, but they exist. And then we have electronic, the whole world of electronic money um, with central bank reserves, meaning S&P side accounts, commercial bank money, bank deposits, e-money, and then, and then the private money, which exists in a centralized and a decentralized form. A decentralized um, are all virtual currencies, like Bitcoin, if they are currently around uh, 800 virtual currencies. But we also have um, centralized private money. One important example for Switzerland is WIA, but also the mobile-based um, monies like the um, M-Pesa, uh, which plays an important role in Kenya. And if you now look at the, at the exchange mechanism, this, this here is, is the, the monetary asset and the exchange mechanism. Um, we have, we have um, if we start with cash, peer-to-peer, -peer, you don't need an intermediary to exchange cash. Cash, it's a uh, universal exchange is anonym, anonymous. And CBDC would have very similar um, features in relation to the exchange mechanism. Um, it wouldn't um, guarantee anonymity, but pseudonymity. So um, a high degree of confidentiality, central bank reserves and commercial bank money is transferred via um, payment systems or in the case of um, commercial bank money, correspondent banks. Now let me turn to the, um, the use cases, which can be structured into, into four major cases, which are to a certain degree um, overlapping, but I think it's, 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 uh, it's, it's useful to, to distinguish these, uh, these cases. The um, impact on the financial system of the whole is increasing from A to D. Um, and I think also the likeliness that um, it will be introduced is higher here than, than this one. Uh, we have a, a, first, a first use case where um, central bank digital currency is used as an interbank settlement coin for payment systems and, and security settlement systems. We have a second, um, second use case um, where it is used as cash substitute. That's the, the eCrona um, project. There's a, an emerging, um, extremely interesting and slightly scary discussion about using the central bank digital currency as a new monetary policy tool, opening up a host of new opportunities to, to central bank to be even, even more creative um, in, in, in what they do. Um, and then the, the use case with the um, highest impact would be to open to the general public the possibility to use central bank digital currency for um, as, a, as a store of value, i.e. opening up um, the central bank balance sheet to the general public. I think it's important to note that use cases A and B require blockchain. It doesn't make sense without the blockchain. Um, C and D um, may be real realized using a blockchain, perhaps this is more efficient. Um, but this is also feasible. This would also be feasible with a traditional account structure. But A and B don't don't make sense without without this particular uh, particular technology. So let me take a closer look um, at these four use cases and start with uh, um, central bank digital currency as a settlement coin. That this CBDC would be. Um, issued as a, as a unit um, for the settlement of payments and securities transactions. This will most likely only, only happen when the existing syst systems um, would be substituted, would be replaced. But it would also um, enable new blockchain-based platforms which would integrate the issuance of securities, um, the, um, the transfer of securities, creating uh, 
an uninterrupted chain um, of, of ownership proofs, which would also permit to integrate corporate action and even with a, with a DAO, with a decentralized autonomous organization, certain governance features um, into the way securities are issued and, and, and transferred. And um, I, I absolutely believe that this has a, has a huge potential. I absolutely believe this is one of the most promising use cases for this new technology. And this will, at least when it's used um, in mainstream financial services, this will require to, um, to be able to settle in central bank money. The, the technical um, setup would be that um, we would have a distributed ledger with um, CBDC issued by the central bank. The central bank would run one, one of several nodes in the, in the ledger, although there are also um, certain, certain discussions <clears throat> that the distributed ledger could be um, uh, confined to, to one single node which of course raises the question whether we are talking about the, about the same technology here. I will get back to that. Uh, of, of course, uh, no central bank will issue central bank money without controlling the underlying technology. And this is, a, this is one of these, these uh, tensions um, that uh, merit uh, further, further discussion. Um, it is generally assumed in the discussions that the access to this kind of central bank money would be restricted to banks and other service providers, so we would have a permissioned um, DLT. Um, this would, would make uh, the life much easier also for regulators, because this is also one of the unresolved questions, how want to, do you want to regulate a truly um, unlimited, um, unpermissioned global um, distributed network. Um, I'm sure the regulators don't, don't, don't uh, make up your hopes, but uh, I'm sure the regulators will find a way, but uh, it, this, is, this, is, uh, this is certainly not um, something that is resolved. The impact will be lower access barriers and uh, an easier integration for non-bank service providers, resulting in more competition for banks, ending the bank, the, the payment business of banks. Um, I think it is safe to assume that these systems will be more efficient. It will be able to run them 24-7. Um, they, they will probably um, offer features for enhanced liquidity manage, uh, management. The ECB test run showed that uh, the, the resilience can be better than in the current centralized systems. Um, they will offer more transparency for the central bank, which may be good or not, but, uh, but that um, comes with this technology. And as I said, this, this, this first use case, this, uh, this, this, this use on as a, as a settlement coin, um, as a settlement currency on um, financial um, market infrastructure systems, that's the, that's the most likely and the, probably the earliest adoption of central bank digital currency. We have then a second use case, and that's uh, central bank digital currency as a substitute to cash, to banknotes and coins. Um, this um, use case would be universal. Everybody would have access to this kind of central bank money. Um, it would provide pseudonymity, not anonymity, but pseudonymity. The transfer would be peer-to-peer, -peer, and it is assumed that no interest would be paid, like, like in the case of cash. So really, the, uh, the, the functionalities of cash would be closely uh, mirrored. The impact on, on end users would be that they would have an easier and better uh, and more reliable access to the blockchain of the emerging blockchain economy. Currently, you have to use um, virtual currency for that. This implies major um, forex um, risks. Given the high um, volatility, there are um, other risks, um, as various accidents have shown uh, in the past. So offering central bank digital currency for using blockchain-based applications uh, would, would uh, have a clear benefit to end users. Um, it can also be assumed um, that payments would be faster and cheaper, perhaps much faster and cheaper in, cross -border, in the cross-border context. For emerging market, an important consideration is that it would force the financial inclusion. Doesn't, doesn't play a crucial, um, crucial role um, here, but uh, for emerging market, that can be um, uh, an important, important driver. The impact on banks would be that they would probably lose major parts of the payment business. 
and there would probably be a slight dent into the, the, the deposit business. I think in any case, new service providers would emerge with even more increased competition. How would this work if you have an account with the central bank? No, 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 that's, that's blockchain based. No account with the central bank. No, it's in your, in your wallet on the blockchain. It's value based, it's not, not account based. That's, that's the big, big difference. It's really, it's, it's, it's really similar um, to cash, but just digital form. So, so, the, so the, the central bank will just issue this token stamp, yeah. and then after that, they will distribute it. Well, I, I, I wouldn't expect that. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure any central bank has the, the mandate to make gifts. No, um, you could... I'm you, not feeling this necessarily free of charge, but <laughs> after that, they don't control the circulation of this. No, I don't, I don't think so. That's, that's the idea. No, it would be... It would be um, um, distributed um, against central bank reserves. So, so it would, the distribution would take place through holders of central bank reserves, i.e. .e. banks, and then from, from there on um, against, against commercial bank money. Yeah. But where's the substitute for uh, other sorts of money? Like Sorry? It's a substitute. It's a substitute to cash. Yes to cash and to e-money, but e-money is completely, completely irrelevant today. That has never taken off, um, at, least, at least here, but it's, it would be a substitute to cash, really. Why is the power really irrational behind that? I mean, I can see a rationale for, you know, Bitcoin, etc., but why is it irrational to have a substitute for cash? For, uh, for the central bank? For the central bank, uh, maybe it's really, you know, um, um, using, uh, it's a rational for the, uh, let's say, for the, uh, for the global financial system, not maybe for the national, for the central bank. Uh, I really mean, it's rational. I'm not sure I understand your question. I think I'm coming to the to the to the rationale for the central bank, and and, and you're right. I'm, I'm not sure they are really too keen to do that. Also, the Swedes are the Swedes are really seriously looking at it. It's it's simply another step in the direction of the cashless society, okay. an important one. As I said, the e-money has never taken really off. That's 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 not extremely relevant. Um, but it's it's another step in the direction of of the cashless um, society. But it's and I think this is important. It's only a substitute for banknotes and and. Points. So, so this isn't really the. It, is, it has a limited impact as as banknotes uh, and coins have a limited relevance in our daily um, daily life. It is more relevant here than in Sweden. But uh... okay. Sorry, that was too too much. We're coming now to the to the more um, interesting um, part. That's a third scenario. Where we don't have any 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 real information about about thinking in the central banks, I'm not sure where they are currently standing. But what we have is a is an extremely interesting paper from Michael Porto and and Levin um, <coughs> published this 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 August on central bank digital currency and the future of monetary policy. If you're interested, you should read that. It's um, it's absolutely scary. And Porto um, Porto is mainstream central banking. Um, so, so I, I assume this this will find some resonance um, in central banks. And the idea here is to use central bank digital currency as a new monetary policy tool. It would be interest bearing. If you're paying interest, um, you have an expansion of monetary base. Um, and more interestingly, it could also carry negative interest rates, and there's no um, zero lower bound anymore. Zero lower bound refers to this implicit restriction resulting from the possibility um, of, of account holders to move into cash. Um, economists have for a long time believed it's at zero. It's a hard, um, a hard bound at zero percent interest rates. We today know it's somewhere lower, up to minus one percent, but probably not much more. With central bank digital currency, there's no limit. CBDC as a new monetary policy tool could also be indexed. That's, that's uh, one of the suggestions made by, by Porto to the general price level. So you have a choice between 
um, stable nominal or stable real um, value again um, uh, a possibility that um, or, or a, a feature to the open news possibilities and which would probably um, make redundant the use of uh, um, inflation target above zero. You could probably try to target the zero percent um, inflation inflation target. So would it be fair to say that this is basically equivalent more or less to the full and complete implementation of A and B? Yeah, I think it, it entails that. You're, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, I'm not sure it really requires full universal, uh, universality. It really requires the access of the general public to central bank money. Um, it would probably also work to, to with, a, with a restricted asset uh, access, but, uh, but it, goes, it goes much further than, than, than uh, use case A, which, which is basically a technical one. Um, financial market infrastructure stuff, and use case two, which is really limited to this cash substitution stuff. So this this clearly goes goes well beyond. This clearly goes well beyond. Now the impact would would be um, um, probably remarkable expansion of the central bank monetary policy toolkit beyond what we have seen um, since two thousand and seven. Even more, it would offer. Um, great possibilities for unlimited financial repression. It would probably require the end of cash. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. But that, I mean, that's, a, that's, anyway, uh, that's anyway a discussion that's out there also for the other, for the other um, use cases. But here, uh, the whole thing wouldn't work um, with uh, cash still existing. Um, and it would clearly have a, a massively negative impact on the deposit base on, of banks now. If it's if it's universal, um, if the general public can hold this kind of central bank money, um, banks would lose parts of the deposit base. Oops, sorry. I would have a blockchain account and transfer money to anyone else on the blockchain account. Yeah, that's that's the idea of the blockchain. Yeah, with your with your mobile. And then the, the, the last use case, which is, which is really to a certain degree overlapping um, with, with use case C, but w which has a different rationale. It's not, it's not from a central bank perspective. Um, it's, it's more from the perspective um, really that the general public has unrestricted as access to central bank money, that central bank money could be used as a, as a store of value, which of course is safer than commercial bank money. You don't have any credit risk. And this would clearly result in a partial narrow banking system, perhaps not in a completely narrow banking system, that would really, really depend um, on, on, on the reaction of the banks. Banks could still attract money uh, by paying higher, higher interest, which doesn't sound so, so bad at first sight, unless you're working for a bank. Um, but it, it, would, it would clearly dent deeply into the deposit base um, of the banking system with effects on the credit business. You can disjunct that completely. It's the most disruptive scenario. And as use case, use case C from a, from a legal perspective, and Christian warned me not to talk too much about law, but since I haven't mentioned it uh, not once time so far, um, permit me to, to, um, to say something. It requires, in my view, very clearly a new central bank mandate and policy. It's not uh, something that needs to be settled, in my view, in the Constitution, um, if you would um, take this kind of step. Since you mentioned the law, uh, how would you position uh, the, the foregoing limits of the, the context uh, of these scenarios that we've discussed? I, I, I feared this, this question would come. Um, and, and, and I fear foregoing initiative is a topic you can talk um, um, at least another half an hour because it's a kind of check in the box. It's, it's a little bit, it has really many, many different features. One of the features is to make, to make money safer by backing it fully um, with, uh, with, with, with central bank money in that respect. Um, and that's, that's a point um, uh, argued by, by Nippelt, the, the head of the Gertzensee Study Center, SNB, SNB uh, run think tank. Um, and it produced a paper, published a paper this summer in the, the NZZ, and he argued that, that with central bank digital currency, you could, could, could realize certain goals of the um, Volgate Initiative um, based on market mechanisms. Um, this 
caused quite a violent uh, contradiction from, from uh, members of the um, initiative committee. Um, I think it's important to, to say the, the Folgate initiative really has a whole host of, of, uh, of goals and features um, which at the end of the day would, would, would uh, lead to the nationalization of the financial system. So this isn't only about, about making, making um, money um, more safer and more robust. This is really only, only one goal. And I must also say I don't really understand how they want to achieve that. They are saying it would be, it would be uh, bankruptcy remote. Commercial bank money would be bankruptcy remote. I don't, I don't understand how they want to achieve that. Where well, the banks have to put that money on, on, on SPV, which is bankruptcy remote, or no clue how they want to achieve that. And nobody's, nobody's explaining that to me. So. So, so yeah, there, there are there are certain certain overlaps, but uh, but but the default gate initiative goes way beyond um, what we're talking what we're talking here. So let me briefly, very briefly, turn to that question which was already um, asked and which is an extremely valid one: Why, for heaven's sake, should uh, central banks engage in this kind of behavior? It will cause nothing but troubles and discussions and changes to the mandate, and that's not something something any anybody wants. What you see here is a is a, a paragraph from that IMF paper I already um, mentioned before that was published in August. Um, it, it says uh, it could spur technical in innovation. That's not part of the central bank mandate to spur technical innovation. So um, I'm not really sure um, that's, uh, that that will be a driving, a driving force. It might be that it is necessary to issue central bank digital currency um, if uh, virtual currencies are gaining um, more ground. I don't think this is happening. I don't think this is happening, not at all. Um, I think if there's a, there's a driver, um, an important driving force, then it will really be technical innovation um, with respect to payment systems. If this technology is really better than what we have today, um, then it will be adopted sooner or later. The jury on that is with respect to payment systems is, is, is out there. I mentioned this um, joint ECB BOG um, report, uh, which is uh, uh, encouraging, with encouraging results, but this is, this is really early and perhaps we will conclude in a couple of years that, that what we have is the best we can get with respect to payment systems. With respect to securities clearing and settlement, settlement systems, I'm absolutely convinced that this technology um, has the promise of being much, much better, much more efficient than what we have today. And I, I simply can't imagine that um, this will not crowd out um, in the medium term, in the medium term, our current um, systems, which are highly complex, which entail shortfall risks. You don't really know what, what is in your securities account is really existing in the system. I, as a lawyer, can't explain to you what you really have in your account when you're holding, holding for a Swiss account German securities. And I, I try and hard, believe me. <laughs> This system are working well. I'm not saying I'm not saying otherwise, unless they don't, don't work well, like in the case of Lehman. So I really think this is this is a, this this is a, this this technology is holding um, great promises there. And in order to realise these potential promises, we'll need um, central bank digital currency. So that's my take on what most likely will will happen. I think it should be clear by now that it, it's really early days. There are, there are a large number of, of open issues and need for future research, also something all central banks are emphasizing. There are technical issues, which I don't fully understand. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard, but, uh, but, uh, but I'm not an IT guy. Um, but very clearly, scalability um, is an issue. Much progress has been made in that respect. Uh, but, but this is still an open issue. The um, ECB Bank of Japan test case, test run, uh, was using um, 65 nodes, and they were able to um, transact um, up to 300 uh, requests per second. Um, and this is, this is light years away from the requirements of, uh, of a retail system. This, this works for a, for a wholesale system, but, uh, but this is light years away from the requirements of a um, retail system. But on the other hand, it's 10 years ago that um, Apple um, 
um, presented the first iPhone, and I'm not sure whether you remember how, 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 how bad that thing was, and compare it to what we have now for even more money. There are certain, certain issues to the basic design which are specific to the discussion of central bank digital currency. Um, with the central bank, we have a, third, a trusted third party, and the, the, the goal and the, the inherent promise of the, the blockchain technology is to make redundant the trusted third party. But with the central bank, we have one. And as I mentioned before, the central bank will not give up the control of, of their money. Um, and if we are ending up with a, with a distributed ledger with one node, then we don't have a distributed ledger. As I said, the, the ECB test run used 65, 65 nodes. Um, so this will probably be the, the, the solution that we have a, a kind of restricted or, the, or, or a two-tiered um, system. Raising the issue of access. We have huge, really huge um, issues in respect to transparency of privacy and privacy. And I don't think that these can be tackled based on our existing law on the Data Protection Act or whatever we have. Um, if, if we are going in this direction, I as a lawyer, lawyer want to know exactly who has access to this wonderful, complete data you have uh, on the blockchain. Of course, you can access transaction data today, but it's an extremely cumbersome process. You need to, to know the account. Um, it takes time. You're running into, into hurdles if it's, if it's, uh, um, it's cross-border. Um, and the, this technology is completely, completely different. You have online transparency, and I want to know exactly who has access um, to, to this data. And I'd like to have written that in the Constitution. I as a lawyer. Won't happen, but... Uh, um, I would think that that would be a good thing. Um, the future of cash, we already touched on that. Um, I personally believe cash is freedom. And if the result of this development is um, that the end of cash, I'm, 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 I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm really so enthusiastic. There are issues of the competition among um, currencies. First, um, state-backed currency state currency versus private currencies. Our current system is that, that uh, you are free to, um, to issue your own currency. It's even protected by the Constitution, uh, by the um, Economic Freedom Article of the Constitution. Um, with CBDC, the central banks would virtually crowd out um, private currencies. I don't see currencies, currency exist uh, or, or deploy uh, massive positive network externalities. And um, you can't compete against um, against the sovereign currency. I don't think that works. It also raises the question of the competition among various sovereign currencies. It would be much easier to hold foreign currency than it is um, today. And last but not least, but I, I, I will not dwell on that. The legal framework. Um, the there are, there, there are a long list of, uh, of, of open issues, not so much regulation. I think regulation, with, uh, with, with that's in, so, so far we have focused mostly on regulation, but I think that's not so difficult. Uh, the regulator will figure out something sooner or later um, how to deal with that. But there are issues of pro uh, property law. Um, you must ensure that the token on the blockchain really represents the securities. And the whole concept of securities, which is, which is absolute fund absolutely fundamental for um, our financial system, is called into question. I'm not sure it makes sense anymore in, um, um, in, in this environment. That's a discussion that has started now. Really, this, this, this summer that's, that's taking off slowly, uh, but that will take uh, a certain time that will, will, will uh, require um, action from the legislator. And the legislator hasn't realized that. So I'm, I'm coming to uh, the conclusion of my presentation. Um, I think it's, it's really a hot topic, um, perhaps, perhaps the hottest topic um, currently discussed among uh, central banks. There are different use cases which are uh, considered um, with various degrees of uh, disruption, uh, disruptive effects. All use cases have in common that it will lower entry barriers for new service providers, resulting in increased competition, and the most disruptive scenario will result in a narrower banking system. And I hope I made absolutely clear this is no technicality. We're not talking here about some technical stuff of how 
payment systems are running or how money is created and distributed this um, is a topic of general interest and um, I'm happy that um, that um, I have a full house here um, that uh, I obviously met some interest and I uh, hope I have contributed a little bit to um, get this discussion started so um, I'm at the end of my present presentation before I'm taking questions I'd like to make a short commercial break um, I'm co-chairing um, a seminar on on this issue that will take place in November um, it's a one day um, one day seminar jointly organized by Univers universities of Zurich and, uh, and and Lucerne we will have somebody from the Riksbank who will um, ex explain what's going on with the uh, with the e krona uh, we will have somebody from ECB who will present ECB's position on that um, we will have an IT guy and I'm looking forward um, very much um, to, to his presentation, we will have um, Dirk Knippelt from the um, Study Center Gertzensee who, who will discuss, discuss this monetary policy um, uh, use case. If you're interested, I have a couple of uh, flyers um, with me, or you can send me an email or leave your card here. Um, I'd be happy to welcome you. So um, that's what I have to say. Um, thank you for your attention and uh, I'm happy to, to take questions here or then um, later on during, during lunch. Thank you.